Sean would face down here, and I'm with one of the members of the band Stick to Your Guns, and you are? George, hi. Play and drums for Stick to Your Guns. Nice. Um, this is kind of a spur of the moment kind of interview, so we didn't really actually have any questions written up, but I'm sure we can wing something up pretty good here. Um, How does it feel to be playing in uh, Denver here with the Almighty Terror? Love playing Denver. I actually love playing this particular venue. Uh, I think we played the Marquee Theater probably upwards of like our fifth or sixth time. I don't know. Great venue. Awesome crowds, awesome turnouts. Um, really good staff. Great pizza. Um, uh, as, so far as us playing in Denver, everything's great. Um, and playing with the Almighty Terror is just ice on the cake for us. So. That's how he plugged in the marquee there. <laughs> uh, now, your most current album, uh, what is the inspiration behind that? Uh, it's uh, a little bit different sounding from the other stuff. Right. Um, I I guess all of us feel that this is like the first record where Sick Your Guns actually came into our own skid. Uh, for what it's worth, a bunch of kids, 15, 16, weren't thinking much of it. Uh, somehow that got the band to like a hype status, and then when they were doing Comes From Heart, it was like, fuck, we gotta do another record. Uh, here we go. And it was kind of, uh, I, uh, I'm trying to think of a word. It's just like, everything was very uh, half-assed. You know, it, 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 was, it was a good attempt, but it wasn't all heart and soul. And when it came to the Hope Division, I think we all put all we had into it and uh, finally adequately represents the band. Um, the story behind it is uh, just, I guess, uh, we still believe that there's a faction of people out there that actually, you know, want to give and receive nothing in return. People who are actually, you know, philanthropic in their nature. And uh, I think it's really easy to become apathetic. Uh, I think there's a lot of hardcore bands out there today with their middle fingers up in the air and talking about, fuck the world this, fuck the world that. Yet again, you know, they're going back home, they're getting on their iPads, they're getting on their iMacs, they got, you know, 200 pair of Nike, you know, 200 dollar pair of Nike shoes, they want to show you, you know, the hard streets they grew up on, but they're going to show you, you know, an iPhone 4. I, I mean, you know, it, it, to us it doesn't make sense, you know, I think, you know, as we see, we, we're human beings, we should be taking care of each other, so I guess that's the essence we tried to capture them. Now, you guys have been a band for quite some time now. Did you ever think you'd still be, you know, jamming out to this day, especially you're doing the hardcore scene? It's, um, it's surreal. It's definitely surreal. Um, I, I think I was talking to the merch guy about this today. It's, like, I think this is one tour we've been out since about February 4th. We did gear up, and we did the Norma Jean tour right before this, and then we did... Love Norma Jean, Sarah. good guys. Great guys, awesome band. But I, I was talking to the merch guy about how, I mean, it's... It's pretty insane that this is what we do. And anymore, like, it's like a vacation where I'm actually at home. My life is actually, you know, playing music, you know, whether it be hardcore or whatever you want to classify it as, you know. But uh, my life is, you know, getting on stage every night and playing and just driving to the next show. I, I couldn't be more satisfied. Yeah, I noticed, like, the whole mainstream kind of bands that are up that they play on the radio yeah. aren't nearly as popular as the underground bands like you guys and Terror and Agnostic Front and bands like that, which kind of boggles my mind, because you would think that with such a great following that all you guys have, that you guys would be up there. Uh, I'm, you know, um, it's, it's the underground culture, I guess, that is, you know, hardcore music, you know, we're seen as subversive, or, and, and, you know, we want to be subversive, because I guess, you know, being part of an underground scene is, you know, a big fuck you in the street, which we're okay with, you know, we would rather be in conformance to, you know, just the bullshit that gets fed to people every day, you know, I would disassociate myself from that every day and choose hardcore over, you know, conforming, and, I don't know, going to listen to some fucking shit on the radio. Exactly. Now, this is kind of off the wall question, what are your thoughts on Charlie Sheen? Charlie Sheen? Um, you know, it was funny. I, I, I died laughing during the interview. Um, obviously, uh, his use of nonsensical quips is just astonishing. Dude rattles off non sequiturs like it's just nobody's business. But, um, got drawn out, got played out, as does any joke. I also think that, um, a, you know, we as Americans use, like, pop culture sensations like Charlie Sheen to kind of avert our attention away from, like, you know, revolutions in Libya, revolutions in Egypt, revolutions in Tunis. 
now this whole Bin Laden thing, now we're getting yeah, threatened by it, Pakistan and all that. You know, stuff. it's to me. I, 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 okay, a lot of people want to act like they, you know, they're objective when it comes to their politics, but you know, to me, I uh, first off, I'm I'm kind of appalled that you know so many people are celebrating the death of a man. I understand that you know he was technically, I get you know, depending on what how you believe in this or not, he's responsible for the death of over 3,000 Americans. But we've been engaged for a decade-long war in Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, we've killed you know hundreds of thousands of innocent lives, possibly you know, or you know, upwards of millions of lives. You know, whether they actually be affiliated with terrorist you know, organizations like Al Qaeda or or not, you know, whether it's just innocent, innocent bystanders. You know, we've sent you know hundreds of our own troops home in caskets. And you know the killing of Osama is going to do what? Is it going to end? You know, is it going to end terrorism? Is it going to bring peace to the Middle East? You know, it's a figure. It's a joke. Where you know, it's something that the media is going to play out to you know arouse morale in Americans for a little bit, and then it's just going to die out. And the war on terror is still going to be you know raging like it ever was. Uh, now, do you guys have a, a new album in the works at all, or? Uh, yeah, we are uh, we're writing while we're on the road. Um, we have a couple months out, off after this before we go back to Europe for some Euro festivals. And we're going to South Africa. Um, then in the fall, we're going to do a, uh, hopefully it's in the works, like a tour that's like geared towards donating a lot of money and the proceeds to charity. Um, but in the times that we have off, I know that we'll be writing a lot. Um, hopefully we either record by the end of this year or early next year. We actually record in Fort Collins, up at the Blast Room. Oh, which, excellent. Yeah, so I guess Sift Your Hands kind of has a history of Denver. Really like the Denver area, you know, whether it be Fort Collins or, you know, Denver. Or, uh, it's got to be the altitude. Right, yeah, <laughs> Fort, Fort Collins or Denver or Colorado Springs, you know. I, I guess we just love Colorado, so. I don't blame you. I was born and raised in Florida. I lived right. in Austin, Texas for about a month. Hated it. <laughs> Moved here. I don't want to leave. Right, it's I, I, beautiful city, beautiful cities. You know, the three that are within an hour of each other. Um, I think I've yet to have a bad experience any time I've been in the state of Colorado. So, yeah. Now, if you guys have not ever heard or ever seen Stick to Your Guns, you guys definitely need to check them out. These guys are fucking kick ass. Uh, definitely thank you, man. Oh, hey, no problem. Thank you. And thanks, Thomas.